Okay, so the last talk of this session is um, by Jean-François Grey. Um, he is a PhD student at a teaching and research assistant at the Research Unit in Networking at the University of Liège in the Belgium. Um, so as you can see, he is um, interested in IDS resolution um, and IP fingerprinting. Um, so actually he's continuing his um, work he already did in his master's thesis in his PhD studies. And what he's presenting today is essentially not so much a new functionality, but a way of doing something that can already be done today in a very resource conscious way so that we don't waste too much network resource or don't put too much burden on the network when performing our measurements. So good afternoon. Thank you for attending uh, this presentation. So I'm going to present the paper towards the renewed alias resolution with space search reduction on IP fingerprinting. For those who are not too familiar with alias resolution, I uh, remind you that this is the process of aggregating IP interfaces together in a single identifier that corresponds to a router. So in the topology discovery field, it's quite a big topic uh, that has been discussed for many years uh, until now. So, uh, quick summary about this presentation. So, for those uh, of you who were uh, last year in Nouvelle-Anneuve in TMA, you probably already saw me presenting uh, the paper TwinNet Discovering and Connecting Some Nets, which was a paper about a new tool called TwinNet, which uh, aims at discovering some nets and mapping a, a target domain on the basis of these some nets using a tree-like structure and the name. And at this time, we already discussed the potential of this tool for alias resolution, but uh, it was quite superficial at that time. And so this year, uh, we are going deeper into this topic of alias resolution by discussing a general methodology uh, to combine several states of the art alias resolution techniques. We also <coughs> validated this approach on the Guantu academic network and we deployed uh, our technique on Planet Lab and made several observations in the wild. In a sense, uh, last year I presented the main trunk of my research and this year I'm bringing the first fruits. So let's first <laughs> have a quick review of some state of the art alias resolution techniques. So for those who are familiar with the domain, you know that many different approaches have been explored during the, latter, the past decade or even before. So for instance, there are several techniques which revolve around the IPID field of the IPv4 protocol. You also have reverse DNS. You also have IGMP probing or IPv4 timestamp option. But the problem of most of these techniques is that you cannot rely on only one technique nowadays because there are several obstacles uh, when you deploy it in the wild. And in particular, it's very difficult to, today to use the IGMP probing, most notably because the uh, ask neighbors message is uh, now being filtered by most routers. And similarly, it's difficult to use the IPv4 timestamp option because uh, since 2014 and 14, the Internet Engineering Task Force recommends to drop <coughs> all packets, all IPv4 packets that enable options. So what we are going to discuss uh, today is a general methodology to combine all these techniques together. The idea is like we have a toolbox of state-of-the-art techniques and what we want to do is to make the best use of that toolbox. So we elaborated a methodology made of three uh, three major steps. The first one consists in identifying uh, closed IPs in a target domain uh, in to determine if they can be aliased together, that is the space search reduction. Then the second step consists in studying these individual IPs in order to fingerprint them and see how they behave in general in order to select the best method, that is the IP fingerprinting. And finally, the third and last step consists in applying the selected method that is the actual alias resolution in the classical sense, at least. So let's first start with the space search reduction with TwinNet. So for a quick reminder, TwinNet is a topology discovery tool which discovers a target domain on the basis on these subnets. So it first discovers the subnets, but it also maps them in the target domain. And to do so, it relies on the notion of neighborhood. 
which is a network location uh, which is bordered by several subnets which are all one hop away from each other. So in real life, a neighborhood will either consist of a single router, either of a mesh of routers, possibly connected with layer two devices. And so the intuition is if you have, for instance, two subnets and you run trace route measurements towards uh, each of these subnets, if you see that the route is uh, of the same length for both subnets and that the last steps uh, towards the subnets are the same, then you can infer that these subnets are actually accessed to the same router or the same mesh of router and therefore a neighborhood. So let's see how uh, quick, quickly how TreeNet builds these neighborhoods because the main uh, point of TreeNet is to infer these neighborhoods with a tree-like structure. So here you have a simple example of toy topology for just for the sake of the presentation. So the first step will consist in discovering the subnets with an algorithm that is a combination of uh, the former tool ExploreNet and some heuristics added in TreeNet to ma make the subnets more accurate. And afterwards, TreeNet will run Paris trace route towards each of these subnets. And then you, you get this view, which is basically the observable, sub, uh, the observable network after running the, the subnet inference and the trace route uh, towards each of these subnets. So you get interfaces from the subnets along interfaces from the, from the trace route. And then all this collected data is used to build a tree-like structure which, in which the internal nodes model the neighborhood, so what we want to infer in the first place with TreeNet. And the leaves of the tree are also the subnets. And each neighborhood is annotated with uh, an IP interface that appears in the trace route records. Note uh, also that uh, the blue arrow here symbolizes the fact that uh, a subnet can actually contain uh, an interface that appears as a label of a neighborhood. This means actually that this subnet is a connection medium between two consecutive neighborhoods. So in a sense, by interpreting the tree correctly, we can recover the, uh, the initial topology, at least from a subnet point of view. And what is interesting with the notion of neighborhood is that in subnets, we are actually able to discover interfaces that are likely router interfaces because there are some variation in uh, time tooling. And so if we gather all these interfaces along the interfaces from the terrace route record, we obtain for each neighborhood a set of uh, router interfaces and therefore a set of aliasable IPs, which we also refer to in the paper as set sets of alias candidates. So now the next step consists in selecting the right alias resolution method to, uh, to alias this interface together. The main idea here is to see first, in the first place, how this interface behaves. Because if you have similar interfaces with uh, similar behavior, then these interfaces are more likely to be aliases. Because similar behavior, in a sense, represents the fact that these IPs, for example, might be from the same equipment vendor. And to do so, we extended upon the work of one of my colleagues, Hig van der Bell, who, uh, who worked on the paper Network Fingerprinting TTL-based Rotor Signature, uh, who, which uh, he, he presented at IMC 2013. And in this paper, he, dis he discussed uh, how we could fingerprint router interfaces on the basis of t initial TTL values and it discussed the possibility that uh, these fingerprints might actually correspond to some uh, brands of routers, for instance. And so the advantages of uh, this approach is that we can use a small and fixed amount of probes for each interface. For example, in our whole methodology, we use only six probes per IP, which is quite economic. And it also kind of profiles the uh, alias candidates. So it's really interesting, both for alias resolution, but also to study how router interfaces in the internet in general behave. And I will present some results about that uh, in a few slides. So, but first, uh, here is an example of a, a fingerprint we use in our methodology. So there are five values. The first one being uh, a value which is inspired by the work of uh, if 2 So the inferred initial TTL of the ping replies. 
The second value is the source IP, source IP of the ICMP port in the stable heap line. For quick reminder, the if finder to topology discovery tool sends UDP probes to, uh, to IP interface with an unlikely high port number in order to get such an ICMP port on reachable reply. The trick is that when you get such a reply, the source IP of that message might not always be the, the same IP as the target. So you can infer that the two IPs are actually aliases. And so we kind of reproduce uh, the, this behavior by sending a single UDP probe to, uh, to each IP and get the source IP of that port uh, reachable reply, if we got one, of course. The third value is the IP ID counter class. To put things simply, it's a label to determine if this particular IP is fit for IP ID based alias resolution. Uh, for instance, here you have two labels, echo and healthy. Echo simply means that the IP IDs uh, sent by the, by the IP interface are actually the same IP IDs you sent along with the probe. So it kind of echoes the IP IDs. So it's not fit for IP ID based resolution. On the other hand, a healthy IP ID counter means that you got different IP IDs from the probes and that the, the sequence of IDs form a soundly increasing sequence. So in that case, you can use IP ID based alias resolution. And the fourth and fifth value of the vector they are simply there to symbolize the fact that an IP has an associated host name or, and complies with the ICMP timestamp request mechanism. So once we have uh, fingerprinted all IPs within a neighborhood, uh, we will group the IPs according to the fingerprint, just ignoring the host name because it is quite common uh, in, a, in a network that you have router where only one particular interface has a host name. We saw that uh, actually several times or in our academic network. So you, you should not uh, chunk your IPs according to, to that particular value. And then we will select uh, the best suited alias resolution method according to the fingerprint. So if we got, for instance, a source IP uh, for the port reachable reply, we will try first to apply the if finder method. Otherwise, if we got a healthy IP ID counter, we will rather use the IP ID based method, either ally, either the methods based on velocity modeling. And finally, uh, we will consider reverse DNS in the last place, or group the IPs according to the fingerprints if we got some uh, values for each field of the fingerprint. So we implemented this methodology in TreeNet, and we deployed TreeNet on uh, slash 16 academic prefix, which is also accompanied by two side uh, slash 24 prefix, which are for the backbone of the network. And we compared the result as alias pairs with a ground truth provided by the network operators after several emails exchanged. So we also run uh, MIDAR, which is one of the most accurate uh, IP ID alias resolution tool for the sake of comparison. And we should also, I should also note that we took a vantage point from within the network in order to ensure maximum responsivity and that the vast majority of IPs within that network are also fit for IP ID based IAS resolution. So in a sense, here uh, MIDA is in uh, its element, in a sense. And the last note is that we pro while we provided the IP prefixes directly to TreeNet, we had to filter the responsive IPs first to feed them as input to MIDA. So here are the validation results. The first main result you, you should see is that both tools have high accuracy, above 98%, and very few false positives. So this is already a very good news. Now there are differences between Trinet and MIDA, and in particular, despite being a, more, a bit more pessimistic, so there are a f uh, more false negatives with Trinet than MIDA, Trinet is actually much faster and more economic in terms of probes. So for instance, you can see that the part of the program dedicated to alias resolution, so doing the fingerprinting and uh, then the actual resolution, lasts in last for like four minutes, while MIDA takes almost two hours to complete its alias resolution. And moreover, 
Trinet only used less than 2,000 probes for, for this process, while MIDA used hundreds of thousands of, of probes for the same process. Then we also deployed a tree net on uh, the Planet Lab test bed in order on uh, 20 different Planet Lab nodes in order to measure the 20 different autonomous systems with various scales and holes in the internet topology. And the data sets include all at once subnets, aliases, and fingerprints. The main motivations for uh, doing this in the wild study is not only to connect collect data on the different autonomous systems. It's also to study the fingerprints and, in the end, evaluate the permeability of the different state-of-the-art alias resolution techniques in the wild. Perhaps the most important and most interesting result uh, we, we got from this study is that uh, when we compared fingerprints in different ISs, we saw that there was kind of a correlation between some values. So here you have two figures uh, which consist of bar plots, stacked bar plots. And on the x-axis you have the 20 different ISs, and on the y-axis you have the proportions for each category. And you can see there that the behavior of the IPID counters, here on the left, so healthy, echo, random, and undefined, kind of correlates with the initial TTL value on the right uh, used to reply to the ping probes. And so here, for instance, the 64 initial TTL value kind of matches the healthy IPID counter class. And to further prove this point, I also have a third figure where we plotted the, correlate, the observed correlation. And if you compare this uh, method, these figures together, you see that the likeliness of the gray, light gray zone is always the same. So it's really an interesting result because not only, not only this assess once again the soundness of fingerprinting, it also shows that we could use some heuristics in alias resolution in the future. For instance, if you see that the initial TTL value is 64, it's very likely that you can uh, actually use IPID-based alias resolution. Another figure uh, we got from uh, this measurement is the spread of the alias resolution methods in our aliases. So the two main categories of methods that work are basically IPID-based uh, alias resolution technique and reverse DNS and grouping of similar fingerprints. So this shows that we cannot exclusively rely on IPID-based techniques, for instance. You should also note, note that the address-based method, so the ifinder method, was not very successful because it only worked for one particular house. But in that IS, we got approximately 30% of uh, aliases through that method. So because this is a cheap and uh, easy to implement method, you should, always, uh, you should always consider it, maybe. Because if you are able to get past uh, transit filtering, then you can, achieve, you can get some uh, rather accurate aliases. So in summary, for the many strengths and limitations of the current Trinet version. So not only Trinet comes with some net level data because it's uh, the first uh, proposal of Trinet. It also comes with a rather cheap and fast alias resolution scheme which packs several state-of-the-art methods. And because of that, it is a tool we believe is fit for network modeling in the future. For instance, to study topology at both the router and the subnet level. However, it has some shortcomings and limitations. In particular, Trinet can be impeded by uh, subnet inference accuracy because if we cannot get accurate subnets, we cannot get uh, much more stuff that is accurate, actually. We also have, uh, of course, threshold issue because, for instance, if we have anonymous interfaces along the path to subnets, we, we will have a hard time to infer neighborhoods and then uh, do alias resolution. And finally, we are also limited in the reverse DNS part of the program because there are some very specific naming conventions in some autonomous systems that are not compatible with our current heuristics. But of course, all that can be improved in the future. That's actually my ongoing research. So as a conclusion, I would like to convince you that you should use Trinet, but <laughs> since I'm not sure uh, it will work, I prefer to give you take-home messages so what you should consider 
as the main results of this paper uh, for the future of topology discovery. My first message is that if you have uh, an existing topology discovery tool uh, for any level, some net level, there is, I think there is also a point of presence level, etc., you should take advantage of it in order to, to conduct fast alias resolution. In our case, so initially, we, had, we have a tool that is focusing on some net level, so it's very different in the first place. But since we are able to, in, to derive some sets of IPs from the subnets and the traceroute records towards each of them, we are able to get sets of IP that can be aliased together and that should never be considered with other sets of IPs. So it makes alias resolution much easier in terms of, of space. And it's, in the end, it's a kind of coarse-grained alias resolution. My second message is that relying on single alias resolution method nowadays has become highly unrealistic, as you saw in the Planet Lab measurements. So instead, you should always consider several methods at once. And in our case, the, the good news is that most of the methods we use are not mutually exclusive. So for instance, because most of them always focus on some particular uh, network feature or, uh, or protocol uh, functionality. For example, ally and all IPID based methods focus on the IP identifier field of the IPv4 header. Reverse DNS obviously focus on uh, the host names, etc. And so, when one of these methods ca cannot work for one reason or another, you still can pick another to try to do, to, to do alias resolution. And to this end, we used IP fingerprinting in the sense of uh, Heave uh, Van Nobel's paper. And this fingerprinting helps us to further chunk the set of IP and to uh, pick the most suited alias, alias resolution method in a particular case. So in a sense, versus the coarse grain alias uh, resolution of the previous slide, here we have kind of a fine grained alias resolution. Last but not least, if we accept the ground truth network, uh, I cannot provide you for obvious security reasons. Everything I presented today is freely available online. So TreeNet, is, which implements some approach, is uh, an open source tool. And the measurements I discussed uh, in this presentation uh, that are discussed in the paper are also available online too on my uh, personal GitHub and you have the URLs here if you want to check them out. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So the floor is open for questions. You picked sort of these five or six fingerprints. Do you think there's any scope for improving the fingerprinting where maybe you could replace some of these with better choices or is the the number of things that are likely to be relevant is just so small that this is likely to be almost the best set. So if I understand your question, uh, it's about can we extend the fingerprint or replace some values? Yeah. My answer is yes. Okay. Uh, here it's, uh, it's kind of an extension of, uh, of the paper of uh, Yves Van Nobel. So okay. it's, for me, it's perf since it's, it's quite open, it's perfectly possible that you find other specific network uh, features to uh, extend the fingerprint. And uh, you could also discuss that some of them are maybe not that useful. For instance, here there, there is the ICMP uh, timestamp uh, request compliance. Mm -hmm. We put them in the, in the fingerprint because we thought this would be an interesting addition to the fingerprint. Uh, but we, we, we have no strong evidence for, for the moment. We, we have see, seen uh, no contrary evidence neither that uh, it will be useful in the alias resolution. And we actually discussed this uh, a bit in the paper and leave for future work the fact that whether this is interesting for alias resolution or not. But yes, you, you can obviously extend, extend it. Okay, so what I would be interested in is your, your ground truth is from your campus network. Um, do you have like any intuition how that would face like in a larger network? Uh, you mean validating on the... Yeah, I mean probably you can't do that, but do you have like 
Uh, do you believe, like in the other network, your ground truth would be, or your, your comparison to, to the ground truth? Ah, representative, representative of the yeah. internet. That's kind of a tricky question. <laughs> because uh, we, we tried several times to get uh, other to ground truth from the network operators. We actually worked a bit with uh, Belgian network operators to, to see uh, if we could get other results. Uh, we had a few results, but not as consequent as here, that were mm -hmm. rather positive, so that's why they are not discussed in paper, because they are quite small scale. This uh, Grand Tour actually is the uh, lar largest Grand Tour we got, and that's why we discuss it more thoroughly, and in particular why we, we, we decided to, for instance, to run MIDAR to, uh, to, for the sake of comparison. But Yes, ideally, if we could have other ground truth, that would be that would be better because it's perfectly possible that in some uh, in some particular networks or alias resolution scheme doesn't work that well. For instance, uh, we have in our list of ASs a particular AS where it's very difficult to apply, for instance, IPID based alias resolution, and so we have to rely on reverse DNS. However, the DNS uh, naming conventions of that particular AS are not really uh, fit for our current touristics. So the one of the next improvements of 3Net would be to improve that module to see what we could get uh, from, uh, from that uh, autonomous system after uh, carefully studying how uh, naming conventions work in that uh, net network. Okay. If no one else has a question, I have another one. Um, so, as far as I know, IPv6 is quite popular in Belgium. Yeah. Um, of course, you can't do that like at an internet scale, but perhaps it would be possible to do it on a campus size network, right? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about how your approach would be possible in IPv6 and what would need to be done? So, obviously, currently, Trinet is only available on the, for the IPv4 protocol. Actually, the main limitation for IPv6 is that we need, in the first place, a uh, subnet inference uh, algorithm which is compliant with IPv6. Because in IPv6, the subnets are much larger, and the, some of the hypotheses of uh, the subnet inference algorithm used in Trinet is that you have small uh, subnets where you have, for example, only two IPs and uh, then four IPs, etc. So, uh, we cannot kind of port the, the initial in <coughs> subnet inference algorithm for IPv6. But once we got this uh, IPv6 uh, subnet inference, then we can just use uh, trace root for IPv6. We could then study network uh, protocol particularities that could uh, allow us to do some finger pointing, and then eventually have uh, some uh, working alias resolution. The, the, actually, the main point of uh, this methodology is that it's not tied to a particular network protocol or networking feature. That's uh, one of the main message of the paper. Great, so people should start working on subnet inference by this. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, if there are no more questions, ah, there is one. Uh, so after I've seen the presentation about the sibling inference, like the previous discussion, yeah. do you think you can use like Shock skew and stuff like this to get more input for your method. Uh, I'm not sure I understood <laughs> the question. So if you, I mean, you want to find a different interface with same same interface with different IP. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if you would do like different requests on your same interface, with, like the, the method they use to check like the same the same machine with IPv4 and IPv6. You can, I guess you can do the same thing with like two ah, yes. IPv4 on the same machine, right? Yes, maybe that would be a possibility to move towards IPv6. But I don't know much of, uh, of, the, of that work for, for now, so I'm, I'm not sure. I can, cannot give you a straight answer, but that's, uh, that's a, a, good, uh, a good idea uh, for my, uh, for my uh, point of view. Perfect. Well, let's thank the speaker again. So this concludes our